You've probably done this before. Grabbed a permanent marker to label something, maybe a plastic bin, a glass jar, or a cardboard box. It goes on smooth, dark, confident. But when you make a mistake and try to wipe it away, nothing happens. Soap doesn't work. Water doesn't stand a chance. Even after some serious scrubbing, the mark just stays. There's something strangely powerful about that. A line that refuses to fade, no matter how hard you try to erase it. But what gives this everyday marker such a stubborn hold on the world around it? How does something so small create a mark that seems impossible to remove? Today, we're answering that deceptively simple question. What makes permanent markers permanent? Right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, a permanent marker doesn't seem special. It's just a tube with a felt tip, right? But inside, it's packed with a careful mix of ingredients that make it different from your average pen or highlighter. The ink inside a permanent marker is made of three main parts, something that gives it color, something that carries that color, and something that makes it stick. You can think of it like paint. You've got pigment, liquid, and glue. When you start writing, the liquid part, called the solvent, keeps the ink smooth and wet. But here's the key. That solvent evaporates very quickly. Once it does, what's left behind is the color and a thin layer of resin that acts like invisible glue. That glue is what makes the mark grip the surface and refuse to wash off. In other words, the marker isn't just leaving ink behind, it's leaving behind a tiny film that locks the color in place. Here's what separates permanent markers from everything else. They don't rely on water. Regular pens and washable markers use water-based ink, which means the ink stays where it's supposed to as long as the surface can absorb it, like paper. But if you write on something smooth like glass or plastic, that kind of ink just smears. Permanent markers work differently. Instead of water, their ink uses fast-drying liquids like alcohol. These alcohols help the ink cling to smooth or non-porous surfaces, the kind that water would normally slide right off of. When you write with a permanent marker, the alcohol helps the ink spread evenly, then quickly disappears into the air. What's left behind is the resin and color fused to the surface. It's not just sitting on top. It's partially embedded, bonded enough that wiping it with water won't do much. That's why permanent marker ink works on materials that most other inks can't handle. It's built to grab onto surfaces that don't want to be written on. But staying stuck is only part of the story. The color itself has to last too. The bright black or red or blue of a permanent marker doesn't come from simple dye alone. Dyes dissolve completely in liquid. That's why they can be vivid but they also tend to fade with time or light. Many permanent markers instead use pigments, tiny particles of color that don't dissolve. Once the solvent evaporates, those pigment particles are trapped in the resin layer. That's one of the secrets behind the word permanent. The color doesn't just dry, it gets sealed in place, protected by that thin coat of resin. Even if sunlight or water hits it, it doesn't fade easily. That's also why some markers, like those used for artwork or labeling industrial materials, can stay visible for years. The pigment doesn't just sit on the surface, it becomes part of it. If you could zoom in and see what happens after the solvent dries, you'd notice something interesting. The surface of whatever you wrote on, glass, metal, plastic, now has a thin, almost invisible coating of resin that's holding those tiny particles of color in place. This layer acts like a clear shield. It's flexible enough to stay put, but strong enough to resist water and rubbing. That's why you can handle something written with a permanent marker without smudging it. 
The ink isn't just dry, it's sealed. But this seal has its limits. Certain strong cleaners like acetone or alcohol can break that layer apart. That's why nail polish remover or rubbing alcohol can sometimes erase permanent marker stains. They don't just wipe away the color, they dissolve the shield that's protecting it. Now, despite the name, permanent markers aren't actually forever. Over time, sunlight, air, and moisture can slowly break down the resin and fade the color. So when companies call their product permanent, they really mean resistant. It can stand up to normal wear and tear, water, smudging, time, better than almost any other kind of ink. But given enough years and enough exposure, even permanent ink eventually surrenders. Still, for what it's designed to do, label, mark, and identify things that might get handled or moved around, it's impressively tough. We've all tried this one. You make a mistake with a permanent marker, grab a wet cloth, and nothing happens. It's as if the ink is waterproofed from the start. The reason for that comes down to one simple truth in chemistry, like dissolves like. Water-based inks can be removed with water because both are made of similar materials. But permanent marker ink is oil-like in nature, it's non-polar, and water can't mix with it. They're just too different. So instead of dissolving the ink, water just slides right off. To remove permanent ink, you need something closer in nature to the ink itself, like rubbing alcohol, which can loosen up the resin layer and let you wipe it away. That's why those viral life hacks that show you erasing marker stains with alcohol or hand sanitizer actually work. They're using the same kind of solvent that helped make the ink in the first place. What's fascinating about all this is that something as ordinary as a permanent marker is built on a clever bit of chemistry. It's a balance between color, liquid, and glue all working together in just the right way. When you think about it, there's something poetic about it too. You draw a line, and within seconds, it's set. A tiny mix of molecules forming a bond that won't easily fade. It's a small act of permanence in a world where most things are temporary, and yet even that permanence has limits. Time, sunlight, or the right solvent can eventually undo it. Maybe that's what makes it so satisfying, a reminder that even what seems unchangeable is still part of nature's balance. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.